This is Adam from Figmatic and today I'm going to be showing you how to export animated GIFs from Figma using the Tiny Image plugin. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is go to the Figma community and install the Tiny Image plugin if you haven't already and you can do that by searching for the term Tiny Image in the search bar and under the plugins tab you'll see a result pop up called Tiny Image Compressor and if you haven't already done so there'll be an install button on the right hand side just click on that and once it says installed you'll be ready to go. So now that we've got that installed, we can go back to our project and run the plugin just by right clicking anywhere, going down to plugins and then clicking on tiny image compressor. And that's just going to fire up the plugin that we just installed. So to create a GIF, we need to click on this button in the top of the plugin that says create a GIF and just click on that once and it will prompt you to select some layers on your page that you want to use as the frames for your GIF. And you can actually select those frames before you click the button and that will automatically load them in. Um, or you can just click the button first like we've just done and we can select them now. So I'll show you what that looks like. Um, so just go to your Figma canvas and select as many layers as you want. Um, and these will make up the frames for your GIF and they'll be the ones that we're gonna be animating in a second. Uh, so in my case, I'm just gonna be selecting all of the six frames or photos that I've got in my Figma file and you can see down here the button has changed to say use selected layers and it's got six in the, the brackets to tell us how many we've selected. So now that I've selected those I'm just going to click on the use selected layers button here and that's just loaded up a preview with all of our layers that we've selected. Um, so I've already used this before so there's a couple of preset values in here but I'll go through all of these with you now so you can understand what's going on. Uh, so the first thing to see is we've just got our little preview up here. So this is just playing back what the GIF is going to look like and what the speed looks like and the ordering looks like uh, in real time. So you can change the order of these by changing the uh, drag and drop feature here. You just click on any of the frame thumbnails and drag them along and you'll be able to manually reorder those frames uh, in the order that they get played back here. Um, the other way you can order your frames is by clicking on this little drop down box here and you'll see some preset options to do ordering. Uh, so we can order by the frame layer order, so that'll order them the way that they're ordered in your layers panel. We can order them visually, so if you want to sort the frames from left to right, we can just click on that, and you can see here it's doing from top, uh, top to bottom and then left to right. So we can do that in columns, as this one is, or we can do it by row. So if we do the row version, it's going to sort it from the top all the way across and then go to the next row and then sort all the way across to the bottom. Uh, so that's the way we can visually order it that way. The other thing we can do is change the pause and play state of the preview. So I can click pause and that just stops it wherever it is and then I can manually navigate using these arrows. Um, so that's just a really nice way of double checking all the ordering or just pausing the animation to see what's going on. Uh, you can also restart the animation to the front just by clicking this reset button. Uh, and you can also do that while the animation is playing, so if you want to reset it during the animation back to the start to see what it looks like back at the start, that's the quickest way to do that. Um, and the other option we have is changing the speed. So if we click the play button again, uh, we can actually change the speed in real time. So if I change this from one second per frame down to 500 milliseconds per frame, uh, you can see here that it's going much faster than it was before. Uh, I can even speed that up again. So I can do it to 100 milliseconds, and that's much, much faster again. Or I can do the other extreme and slow it right down. So if I wanted to each frame at two seconds each, uh, that's the way I can do it there. I just set the timer to 200 milliseconds, which is two seconds, and you'll get a two second delay per frame. Now the other thing that we can do is individually override those timings as well. So if I want frame two and frame four, to both be 500 milliseconds, I can do that and that will override those two frames. So you can see here it's jumping over those in half a second, uh, those two specific frames, but all of the other frames are still inheriting the two second delay that we've set down here. So that's just a really nice way of overriding those frames if you do want to have a certain frame go quicker or stay on longer than any of the other frames. You can do that manually uh, using those controls there. Uh, the other option that we have is to loop or playback the GIF. So by default, it's just set to infinite, so it will just loop forever. 
um, but you can uncheck that option and override it. So if we want the GIF to play back only four times and then stop, we can uncheck infinite and change that playback value to four, or I can make it go twice, or I can make it go 10 times. Uh, it's really up to you. Um, in my case, I'm just gonna leave it on infinite and just have the GIF loop over and over. Uh, the next section we have is the sizing. So by default, it will pre-populate the size with whatever the first frame that you've selected is. Um, so in our case, we've got the frames here. You can see it's uh, 1,711 by 1,142, and that's been pre-populated down here. So you don't need to worry about pre-filling that. Uh, of course, you can change those sizes as well. So if we wanted to change that to uh, 500, let's say, you can change that and we can see the preview instantly update there. Um, or we can actually set that to uh, something different where we've got uh, 500 by 1711 or 500 by 500 uh, and that's just going to change that to a square ratio instead of the uh, more landscape version that we had a second ago. Uh, so I'm just going to undo that now and put that back to where we had it. Um, but the other thing I did want to show you was the scaling. So we've got scaling uh, currently it's set to half. Um, by default it gets set to 1x and you can see over here it's giving us a preview of what the actual pixel size is going to be exported as when we save our GIF. Um, so at 1x it's always going to replicate whatever we've got here but we can easily halve that or double that or quarter it just by clicking on these presets. So if we check uh, 0.5 that's going to halve it. If we check 2x that's going to double it and it gives us a preview in pixels of what that's actually going to get saved out as. Um, in my case, I'm just going to leave it as half. So we're going to do 0.5x. Um, the other option that we have is to do uh, a background color. So currently we can't see a background because we've got our image filling up the entire frame. Um, but if we change this cover option to contain and then we change our sizing down to 500, let's say, uh, you can see here by using the contain image option, it's actually making sure that all of the image content always remains in the frame. And it does that by adding in uh, some blank space at the top and the bottom or the left and the right, depending on the ratio that you've selected. Um, so if we change contain back to cover, you can see the cover option will always make sure that the entire frame is covered by the image content. And in that case, it will crop off wherever it needs to crop off to make sure that it all fits. Um, but if we do use contain, that's the option where the background color comes into play. So if we wanted to change this from the default black to white, uh, we can add a hex code for white. So we can do FFFF and that will change it to the white hex code. And we can see in the preview, it's just updating to show us what that would look like if we would export it. Um, so you can put any hex code you want in there. And if you are using the contain op option and you are getting these bars uh, on the left and the right or the top and the bottom, you can change the background color manually just by changing that field there. Uh, the other option we can, we can do is transparency. Um, so you can make the background transparent uh, if you've got those gaps in there. Or more importantly, if you're using transparent uh, SVGs or transparent PNGs as part of your layers. So if you're doing a sprite animation or something along those lines, then the transparent background option can be really handy for exporting a GIF uh, with transparent edges if you're using uh, character animations or, or using transparent GIFs uh, or SVGs or PNGs as your source material. Um, so in my case, I'm going to leave that off and I'm just going to revert that back. So I'm going to make this uh, just a completely square image and I'm going to set that to cover. And in this case, I'm going to select the image quality to be pretty high. So I'm just going to leave it at 90. Uh, it's pretty safe to leave it up there. It's not going to blow out the file size too much compared to something really low um, with the GIF files in particular. So you can leave that somewhere around 80 to 90 and you'll be, you'll be pretty safe. Um, and the very last option is dithering. So by default, no dithering is added. Um, if you are familiar with some of these dithering options and presets and, and you know what is going on there, uh, feel free to play around with those. But for almost all cases, you can just leave it on no dithering and that's just gonna leave the image looking how it's pretty much meant to look. Uh, Okay, so now that we've got all of our settings uh, configured the way that we want and we've got our GIF playing back the way that we like it, 
Uh, all we need to do now is finally click on the button that says export GIF. That's just in the top little header up here. So I'm going to click on that now. And this is going to add all of the frames and render a GIF for us. So there we go. It's just finished. I'm just going to click on save. We're prompted to save it to our computer. So I'm just going to save it to the desktop. Click on save. And if I preview that now, you can see here it's giving us our GIF file uh, just the way that we saw it in the plugin. And we can go ahead and update this on uh, our website or we can send it to our uh, team via Slack or really use it for whatever you want. Uh, this is your, your exported GIF from Figma and uh, yeah, you can basically send it around or share it or upload it any way you want and, uh, and that'll work as expected. So there we go. That's uh, the process of exporting animated GIFs from Figma. Uh, this is an updated tutorial of one that we had out a while ago. Um, just because the interface and the features have been updated in the Tiny Image plugin uh, quite a lot since that first tutorial. So if you have come from that tutorial, uh, this is a more updated one which will reflect uh, much closer to what you'll see in the, the plugin if you download it today. Um, so yeah, I hope you've enjoyed watching this tutorial and I hope if you're creating GIFs using Figma then this has been helpful for you. And uh, please let me know if you have any feedback or questions. Uh, always happy to help and until next time, thank you again for watching.